Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar with us today. <clears throat> I'm Wei Jing, the Technology Commercialization Program Director in Nebraska Business Development Center. Today, we'll have our presenter, Chris, uh, the Department of Energy, SBR, and STTR Program Manager. And he will introduce the Department of Energy, SBR, and STTR Program and also more funding opportunities from there. I will mute you guys during the presentation. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type your question in the chat box. Uh, you can see the, there's a chat column on the, <clears throat> on the right. Uh, we'll have the Q&A session at the end, so you can hold your question until then. The webinar will be uh, recorded. If you have to leave early, uh, we plan on sending out the recording and the slides after the webinar. I will send the recording and the slides to you by your email after this webinar is finished. Uh, okay, I will pass it to our presenter, Chris. Thanks, Wei. I appreciate it very much, and uh, and thanks for inviting us. We uh, always do enjoy doing uh, webinars for uh, for the states that. Uh, we see is we see frequently is underrepresented in our SBIR and STTR programs, and um, and again appreciate that opportunity. Uh, I'll take about 40 minutes here, maybe 45 minutes, just to kind of go through some basic information as it relates to the Department of Energy. But uh, as Wei said, I am Chris Ogwen. I am with the, at the DOE SBIR STTR uh, programs office and. My principal responsibility with, with the program is to coordinate uh, our uh, applicant outreach program. And so what I'm doing today is, is a big part of what uh, my responsibilities are. Um, I'm also currently managing our commercialization assistance program, uh, which provides uh, commercialization assistance to both phase one and phase two uh, awardees. Uh, I'm about to hand that off soon to another colleague in our office, Claudia Cantoni. Uh, so I will not be doing that, but uh, I am also responsible for our Phase Zero program, which I'll also briefly talk about, uh, which is something that I think you would probably be keenly interested in because it provides support to those folks who are interested in applying uh, for their first Phase One at the Department of Energy. So let me go ahead and uh, give you uh, some context here. Make sure my mouse is working. Okay, so what you're looking at here uh, is really, it, it shows you where the Department of Energy falls within the 12 participating SBIR and STTR uh, programs with the Department of Energy. Uh, as you can see here, the Department of Defense is clearly the largest uh, of these, uh, of, of the SBIR and STTR programs, that, that, and they, they make up about 12 individual agencies themselves. Uh, they have uh, the Army, Navy, the Air Force, and uh, they have even some obs more obscure sounding ones like um, Chem Bio Defense. So they are, they are very large uh, along with the National Institutes of Health, uh, Health and Human Services, and it's principally uh, the NIH program. But below that uh, are, are the rest of the agencies that, that fit within there. And, and we uh, currently have a, the third largest budget at about 200 uh, and six million dollars, and that's that's an annual budget that we put out in both phase one and phase two awards. The uh, color coded, if you can see these colors on your screen clearly, uh, those in green are granting agencies. Those are the those are the programs uh, that uh, put out financial assistance uh, grants, and uh, those in blue are principally or almost fully uh, contracting agencies uh, that. Uh, uh, contract out with small businesses to, to uh, do something uh, specific to what they are, are, are calling for. Um, ours, uh, the, the principal difference between a grant and a contract at each of the, uh, you know, between the agencies is that uh, financial assistance, as a grant is called, is, uh, doesn't call for a, um, a deliverable as a contract would. Say at the Department of Defense you're looking for uh, you know, a thousand pair of, of enhanced night vision goggles. That's ultimately where you're going to want to end up after phase two. 
uh, and the Department of Defense would be the procuring uh, buyer for those uh, um, night vision goggles. At the Department of Energy and at the NIH and NASA, for example, you're doing research that supports their mission. And uh, at DOE, um, that's, that's very precisely what you're doing. So what you're doing is that you're, you are doing the research, you're doing research that is complementary to the larger scheme of what we do overall. And so that leads me into uh, what we're all about. And this, again, kind of gives you uh, an idea, uh, a better idea of if, if you can break what we do into parts, uh, you, you can have a fair understanding of where uh, your specific technology might be responsive and where you might want to focus when you're looking at these topics. But I, what I would say here uh, about the department's mission is that when I go anywhere and I talk with people about what we do, most folks think that we're all about uh, renewable energy. And if you see the first box up there on the far right, like, uh, our second box, energy efficiency and renewable energy, uh, that just represents one of the programs at DOE. It's a, it's a large program, but it's not the largest program. And it's not our largest mission. By far, it's not our, our largest mission. If you go down to the last two bullets there, defense, nuclear, nonproliferation, and uh, environmental management, those two programs are uh, constitute probably about 66%, two-thirds of, of the department's budget overall. But what I will tell you is though each of those offices participate, the Defense Nuclear Nonproliferation through the National Nuclear Security Agency, most of the work that they do is defense related. So it's exempt from SBIR and STTR. So there's very little uh, defense nuclear, or there's very little nuclear national security uh, topics at the Department of Energy, but it is our largest budget, and that's where uh, a good portion of our funding goes to. Uh, but it's when you take a look at our goals there, goals one, two, and three, I've color-coded those to, to um, complement the programs that fall into each of those goals. And what you see here is under goal one, uh, we look at that as something uh, as transforming our, our energy systems. Uh, all of those uh, programs are focused on making sure that the traditional energy sources like uh, fossil fuels and nuclear are operated as cleanly as possible um, and that we're bringing on um, you know, more, uh, that we're bringing on renewable energy supplies and, and that our electricity grid uh, is, is modernized and that we're working toward that uh, as best we can and uh, that we can utilize all the new technologies that come out of, of these areas. The, the second bullet is, is where it's our science and engineering goal, and that's where the bulk of the DOE, SBIR, and STTR funding falls. And uh, what you will find here is that second box down, basic energy sciences, that's about a billion dollar program, a billion, maybe a billion and a half now uh, at the Department of Energy, so it, is, it has a very large SBIR, STTR budget. However, it is basic science. So there's not a lot of applied work going on there, not at all. But what they do is since they have such a large budget, they will go ahead and fund other topics in some of the basic programs. And so when you're looking through our topics, and I would encourage you not to uh, forego looking at basic energy sciences because what you'll find there is uh, an energy efficiency and renewable energy topic, you'll find fossil energy topics, nuclear energy topics. They, they will co-fund some of their topics uh, where they're doing some, maybe some complementary research uh, together. So um, don't, I guess, judge a program by its name fully there. But again, that is where most of our basic, that's where all of our basic science topics are uh, in, in those groupings. And I'll, I'll say maybe a little bit more about each of the programs in just a second. And again, I told you uh, goal three there. Uh, is our nuclear security, and we do that through our nonproliferation environmental uh, management efforts, and we have uh, uh, we have uh, a good deal of topics there that uh, would probably be of interest to you, especially if you're doing remote sensing and uh, other sensor technology. Uh, so those are the programs. Uh, we have 12 participating programs. Uh, that participate in, in two releases that we do for phase one and, and phase two each year. So as we go on, just to give you a quick idea of what our function is at DOE, 
Um, the box on the bottom there is, is, is the office that I reside in, and we're an administrative function for the most part. We, we're not uh, a, a one-stop shop, but it's a team effort at, at DOE. So we, we administer the SBIR and STTR programs. Manny Oliver is the director of our program. We have Carl Hebron, who is the in charge of operations. We have Claudia Cantoni, who is picking up all of our, our um, commercialization uh, assistance and outcomes uh, data, and me, who's in charge of the outreach uh, and other cats and dogs that we do at, at this program. We coordinate. We do a call for topics. We go to those program offices that we were just looking at on the last slide. Those are the folks. Those are the, the folks that have the technical expertise at DOE. So we may have over 200. We do have over 200 subtopics to to um, uh, over 75 topics, and so what you will find are these program offices. We'll tell them, hey, topics are due uh, on this date. Uh, get it together. Get us all your your bibliography and references, and so they'll send all that to us in Carl's office, Carl Hebron's group. Uh, the operations side puts together uh, all of the operational aspects. When you submit an application through grants.gov, Carl Hebron is the guy that ultimately coordinates that. So when you are uh, selected for an award uh, for a grant, the, we, then is, we then pass off all the work to our DOE Chicago uh, office. It's our service center. That's where they will issue all uh, new and continuing grants uh, with, with our program. So once, once we get the topics out there and Carl runs you through the operational aspects of getting, uh, you know, going through the review, uh, uh, and evaluation of your proposal and uh, selections are made, those are passed off to the Chicago office. And then we just continue the cycle uh, again when we go on to our next release. So what are we all about? Uh, the DOE, SBR, and STTR programs, as I mentioned earlier, we are a grants program. Uh, we are competitively driven, so there is a lot of competition. We don't just pass out uh, grants. We, You are competing with, with quite a few people um, that are submitting to our two solicitations each year. Uh, what makes us different, what I would pass along to you is that uh, after I'm done talking to you, uh, I would tell you that you'll have a fairly good idea how SBIR and STTR works at the Department of Energy, but you won't have a good idea how it works at any of the other agencies. Now we all work under the, the same enabling legislation. Uh, and we all evaluate proposals using the same criteria. We're looking to see if it's a good idea, whether you have a good team in place and the right facilities, and what type of impact it's going to have. Each of us evaluate those proposals or weight those, the criteria that we evaluate proposals differently. Um, we all have different solicitations. So ours are our funding opportunity announcements, uh, contracts, uh, contracting agencies have solicitations. Uh, you'll hear language used interchangeably, but it's not necessarily interchangeable. We just do that. So um, I'm not trying to confuse you, but it is a very confusing program. If, uh, if you don't stick with the one or two where you think you might have that responsive technology, one or two agencies, uh, you can get very confused on, on, on how to submit, when to submit, through which portal to submit your application, what uh, level of effort you can do for a phase one or phase two award. So my encouragement to you would be is if you think the DOE is an agency that you have something that's responsive to one of our topics, then then do your due diligence with it and dig into what we do and, uh, and, and that way you won't disappoint yourself when it comes time to submit an application after spending many, many hours on it and you find out that you're not even eligible to submit because you didn't register for one of our mandatory registration systems, uh, et cetera. Yeah, that's, I guess that's, I'm getting on my soapbox there, but to continue onward, uh, we do offer both phase one and phase two awards. Phase one is all about the feasibility, whether or not uh, this is something that would be worth funding in a phase two. We offer anywhere between 150000 to 225000 and your work effort there, the project, period is anywhere from 6 to 12 months. Uh, phase 2, the topic uh, is, you can see, anywhere from a million to a million and a half, and that's where your 
uh, you're developing a prototype, and you're 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 doing uh, you're you're working on the development of whatever you might be doing for us. We do offer sequential awards, uh, phase two awards. So you can you theoretically you get a phase one, you can get a phase two, and then you can get a sequential uh, phase two. So you can be uh, under a grant with the Department of Energy working on the same technology for up to five years, uh, if you think about that. And so there are opportunities. We have something that's different than uh, every other agency, and those are technology transfer opportunities. We call them TTOs. And that's an opportunity to transfer some of the inventions uh, made by our uh, national labs or our universities that are under uh, some large grants with us. Uh, you can take their technology, and, uh, and it's where you will receive an option uh, to, to work on that. And you can, you can jumpstart what they are working on uh, if you have some ideas, uh, and then take that out into the commercial world as well. Uh, so you can look further into that. Uh, we do offer uh, uh, some more expanded webinars that talk just about TTOs. And um, so one of the other things we do is we, when our funding opportunity announcements come out, our topics will uh, be for both SBI and STTR. We don't have separate, separate uh, opportunities for an SBI or STTR programs. They're combined. Uh, you can submit an application, one single application, and you can apply to both SBIR and STTR. You just have to meet the, uh, the minimum uh, requirements for each of those awards. Uh, and that always has to do with the level of effort that you put into it. Where is your PI coming from, the small business or maybe the research institution, and uh, uh, the level of effort. Uh, so generally, uh, you do have to get a DOE phase one to get a phase two. Almost 99% of everybody that moves on to a phase two at DOE comes from a phase one. Uh, again, that's principally because it's not that we don't participate, uh, but most people are not doing very specific research that the Department of Energy is all about. Uh, they might be doing environmental management, they might be doing something, but it's not necessarily narrowed down to the topic that we are uh, putting a phase one solicitation out for. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have both phase zero assistance and phase one and two commercialization assistance. Uh, there's two websites there that I would encourage you to look at if, uh, if you're a first time. And even if you're not, it gives you a, a good idea of how to put together an application looking at the doesbrlearning.com. It's uh, the first website uh, in, in any of the federal agencies that offers tutorial guidance. And, and they're fairly short multimedia uh, applications that will walk you sequentially through preparing a uh, phase one application all the way from start to finish once the uh, topics are released. It's, it's a great website. If, uh, um, it is a very good website. Uh, so, and I will talk more, as I said earlier, uh, about each of those programs. But right now, I, just, I wanted to give you an idea of our topics. Uh, these 12 programs, when they're participating, in one of our releases, uh, this what you're looking at on the far right is uh, last year's phase one release two. And underneath each of these, it'll tell you which programs, which DOE research programs are participating in that um, funding opportunity announcement. What we do uh, is we issue our topics uh, about three to four weeks prior to the funding opportunity announcement opening up. So this gives you an idea to to uh, do a little bit of research on your own to determine whether or not you do have a responsive technology uh, to get in touch with the topic manager. We list all of their points of contact following each subtopic. And uh, it, it gives you an idea to prepare uh, as to whether or not you, you believe that this is something you want to put your effort into. Um, so we do offer, as I mentioned earlier, very specific webinars. When the topics are released, we have topic webinars. When the, we, when the FOA opens up, we have an FOA webinar, and we talk about kind of some of the same stuff I'm talking to you about right now, but a little bit more detail. And we will talk to you about um, some very specific elements to, to preparing your phase one application and all of the new information that might be in this funding opportunity announcement that may not have been in the last one. So it's all the relevant and updated information. So just to kind of to, to give you a, a brief idea about 
uh, the programs that are participating uh, here at DOE. Um, the 12 programs that we have, uh, these were the, this was the first group under the green uh, programs, goal one, clean energy technologies. The four programs are now on the left. Um, there are some of the R&D topic areas to the right. Uh, the Office of Electricity Delivery and Energy Reliability, they're all about modernizing the grid. Uh, they'll put topics out there that are related to um, flywheel technology, um, longer term storage grid needs, uh, renewable energy technology that uses batteries, uh, compressed air, hydropower. Uh, EERE, uh, it's the most popular program for SBI or STTR. A lot of competition, a lot of applications come to each of those. That's where you'll find the, the solar, the water, the wind, uh, and all that good stuff. Um, what they're doing is they're trying to produce more efficient uh, renewable technologies, uh, energy technologies. Um, some of the areas include uh, efficient buildings, HVAC, upgrading, uh, lighting and efficiency, uh, more efficient uh, hybrid vehicle technologies, um, and the, the, the typical uh, solar, wind, hydropower, biofuels, and uh, sometimes geothermal technologies. Now, we do have industrial processes as well. We have advanced manufacturing, uh, and that's, that's a very popular, uh, very hot topic now, too. Uh, and, it, and that falls under the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Uh, the Fossil Energy Program Office is, a, is all about carbon-based fuels, uh, as, just, as it sounds. Uh, and trying to use them more efficiently, uh, such as more efficient gas turbines that have less uh, uh, less of an impact on the environment, uh, cleaner coal technologies, carbon sequestration, uh, and so forth. Um, uh, most of these topics are developed in conjunction with our National Energy Technology uh, Laboratory, which is funded by the Office of Fossil Energy, and they're located in Morgantown, West Virginia. So. Uh, those are those again are some some topics of, of interest to a lot of people. NE, uh, our nuclear energy office, is focused on ensuring safe operation of um, existing uh, nuclear power plants, uh, developing safe and cost-effective reactors for future development uh, or deployment, um, and that's that's about what they're all about. So let me just keep moving on. Uh, goal two, that was the. Uh, the, what I call the science and engineering, uh, our, our applied science, and there are six programs that participate. Those six programs make up the Office of Science at the Department of Energy. The Office of Science is where the SBIR and STTR office resides because two-thirds of the funding for all of uh, uh, the SBIR program comes from these six bullets that you see right here, these six research programs. And um, you can see some of the R&D topic areas right over there uh, to the right. And what you'll see under advanced scientific and computing research, um, they're all about high performance computing and networking. Uh, they address there are a lot of challenging computational uh, needs for modeling, uh, simulation, uh, and data analysis. Uh, we have our supercomputer research is done here. And, um, and we have some of the most advanced computing facilities in the world located at several of our labs. Um, the Basic Energy Science Program uh, is, uh, all, is our largest funding program uh, in, in the SBIR program. I told you it's about a billion, billion and a half. I, I need to look into that. I know it's, it, it, it's over a billion, too, so I, I need to find out if it's a billion. What it is, actually, I, I, I keep saying that. I've probably been saying that for about a year now, a billion to a billion and a half. It's a lot of money. Um, some of these programs only have, um, uh, they're only a half million dollar, uh, half billion dollar program. So uh, 1.2 versus 1.5 is a lot of money. So the BES, they're all about uh, funding the development of advanced user facilities at all of our national labs that use uh, x-rays, neutrons, electrons uh, to probe the structure of matter. They're all very, what I call, not boutique, but very specific uh, uh, small businesses that uh, can meet the needs of those programs and uh, it's a small community, the high energy physics, nuclear physics, fusion energy, all of that is what I would call a relatively small community and 
um, and most of those folks come from one of the national labs that, that, that are starting up their small businesses. Um, but the biological and environmental research program is uh, all about, uh, um, uh, they support the, the production of biofuels. Um, they do environmental research that includes uh, climate change modeling, um, subsurface contamination, uh, uh, and transport of those materials. And, uh, and all the fundamental physics that you'll find with, with fusion, high energy, and nuclear physics. Um, we've, we've got some very large accelerators and detection technologies um, that uh, we put out for commercial, uh, or I guess commercially viable fusion energy uh, reactors. We're far away from, from commercializing anything in fusion energy, but uh, we do offer topics in that area that might be of interest to you. So moving on to the third, which is what I call our legacy uh, bullet, uh, our, our program, our goal. Uh, the, the Office of Defense Nuclear Nonproliferation is we used to, the Department of Energy used to manufacture all of the nuclear weapons that were deployed by the Department of Defense. Uh, we do not manufacture in, in the means that we used to, but we do maintain the stockpile. And so that's, that's a, it's a global effort. And, uh, and uh, we do have a lot of sensor technology that you'll find there. Uh, so DNN, uh, Defense Nuclear Nonproliferation, is all about detecting uh, and preventing uh, the transport, the illicit transport of nuclear materials and weapons over our borders. Uh, we do remote detection of nuclear de detonations. Um, we do uh, space detection of detonation. So there's a lot of remote sensing and detecting technologies with both of those programs. EM, environmental management, is responsible for uh, cleaning up those sites, the contaminated sites where we used to manufacture all of our nuclear and chemical uh, technology uh, weapons. And um, so they have a lot of novel detection and remediation technologies. When we bury the stuff in the ground, it's some very caustic environment that we need to have some very stable uh, um, ways to, to uh, monitor and detect what's going on with uh, buried casks underground of, of contaminated uh, material. So uh, as we move on, uh, more about the program, as I've mentioned a couple times, those 12 programs participate in one of two releases each year. Two, we have two phase one releases, release one and release two. I'll show you the schedule, I think, on the next slide here. But what you will see generally is the same, the same programs participate in each release. What you will find is the Office of Basic Energy Sciences uh, will co-fund those, those programs that I mentioned. They're in release too. So they basically fund topics in both releases. And each program has topics in both um, releases as well, depending on what, who's funding what. But principally, most of the topics for each of these programs will fall under one of those two uh, releases. I will mention uh, the Office of Environmental Management uh, does not always participate uh, in release two or release one. So you'll, if you think it, if it was there last year, which it was not, uh, it, it may be there next year. And uh, I, I'm not quite sure if it is or not uh, at this point. But if, if that's something that you're interested in, then you need to keep your eye out for that to make sure you're not uh, just looking at last year's topics. So there is the schedule. This is what we call for uh, FY18. Uh, we do it by, by fiscal year, which begins in October of each year. Uh, but we say FY, it's usually the next year because it's when these uh, applications are actually funded, usually falls into a different fiscal year. But if we look at the program there on the, or the release on the, uh, right there that just got circled, uh, release one, You'll see generally uh, the same thing with both releases, the same time frame, different dates. Release 1 opens up always in July, release 2 almost always in October, sometimes early November. And again, as I mentioned, we open up the topics so you can see that about three to four weeks before uh, we actually open up the, the funding opportunity announcement. And uh, after the topics are released, we have topic webinars where you can listen to the uh, topic managers discuss their various subtopics. And that is uh, primarily just to give you an idea of what they don't want to see. Um, we tell you to take these topics literally. If it says they want uh, you know, an efficiency of 5% uh, 
greater than um, you know the current uh, art that's out there, then that's what they're looking for, and they'll tell you what that threshold is, and that's what they want you to do. So we tell you to take it literally. So when they get on the phone or when they do a webinar, they're trying to tell you what they don't want to see, what they saw last year, what they funded the years past, uh, what is not necessarily state of the art. Um, so that is, those are some some very good uh, things to register for these webinars. We have one that follows the funding opportunity announcement, and uh, and then we have some some other webinars that come out maybe during phase two where we'll talk about the sequential uh, phase twos. And there's two types of sequentials. We have one that's se uh, phase uh, sequential A and sequential B, and um, uh, one is basically to continue your research under phase uh, two, and the other is to uh, to help you out in in terms of commercializing your efforts following phase two. So when we move on from the schedule, um, something I would point out to you, one of our mandatory elements that no other agency is looking for right now is are using as a means to to get applications that letter of intent. If you go right down to uh, the second bullet where the primary purpose is, uh, a letter of intent is a short 500 words or less to one or two page document that uh, it gives us, tells us very specifically, hey, this is who I am, this is my small business, this is the, the topic and subtopic I'm interested in, and here's an idea of why I think I have something responsive. We use that because by law we are mandated to uh, make a, from the, the point that um, uh, the solicitation closes, we have 90 days to notify you of whether or not you have, uh, uh, if, if we want an award or not. And so we use this as an opportunity. We figure out that close to 70% of those that submit a letter of intent will actually submit an application. So we start looking for reviewers immediately once that uh, the letter of intent closes. We're looking for reviewers uh, to take a look at all the proposals that will come in. Um, so it's really for us, it's not for you. Um, we will, the, as you see the secondary purpose that you see there, we will provide you an email notification if your technology appears to be non-responsive. Now we're not evaluating this letter of intent. What we're telling you is that it appears to be non-responsive and we'll give you one of five reasons why we think it, it may be. However, if you submit a letter of intent and we tell you that it appears non-responsive, you're still eligible to submit a phase one application to that topic. It's those people that do not submit a letter of intent. Uh, those are the people that are not eligible to submit an application to DOE. So it, it does serve a few purposes. It is a mandatory requirement and um, you can only submit 10 of those uh, per release. So up to 20 a year and there are quite a few companies that are able to do that so in the past we did not have a limit and uh, so we've kind of stopped that and uh, what we find is we fund about one in every ten applications uh, that are submitted um, so we've dropped that down to ten letters of intent and ten applications per letter one per letter of intent um, so everyone wants to know what are my chances of getting a phase one award at DOE and FY16 uh, we had over 1,500 applications for both releases and we put out uh, 325 awards. You'll see that's about 21%. Uh, so you have about a one in five chance of getting funded for each uh, release that we are for each year that we have a phase one program. What you'll see there is that the 21% awarded, you'll see that 13% were actually recommended for funding but not awarded and that's because we ran out of money. That's why it's a highly competitive program. Uh, we spend all of our money. We never have a problem giving that out and uh, we could probably do much more if we had more money. Um, if we had much more money we could, we could do more awards. But um, So there is. We'll let you know that you were recommended for funding. However, you might wonder how we uh, rank those and, uh, and each program ranks them a little differently depending on what the priority of their mission is and their, their own uh, goals and objectives for why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, what you'll see there, the 55% block, those are the, the people that were not awarded. So the vast majority of, of, of applications, 50 to 60% are not awarded uh, each year. 
but we would encourage you to continue trying and uh, taking reviewer comments uh, to heart and ch if that topic is is put out in the following year then uh, you might s you can resubmit an application uh, hopefully with some upgraded uh, you know project narrative to what you're trying to do or or where it may have fallen short based on what the evaluators were saying in that that little five percent are the people that submitted an application but were administrative administratively declined for one reason or another because they may not have uh, they may have submitted it for a larger budget than what uh, the topic was calling for the level of effort may not have been accurate uh, they may have been uh, subcontracting out way too much of their work for an SBIR. Uh, their principal investigator may have come from the research institution and they submitted for an SBIR where the principal investigator must come from the small business. Uh, so there's various reasons why they may be administratively declined. Uh, it, I, I will tell you all, everything I'm telling you here with regards to uh, uh, the information, not the necessarily the statistics, will be in our funding opportunity announcement. It'll give you the reasons why we will administratively decline an application, uh, and it'll tell you, uh, you know, what reviewers, the criteria reviewers are using to evaluate your proposal. Uh, we give you all that good information right there, and it's a pretty easy read, though it is 50 pages. It's it's not, uh, it isn't rocket science, but it is it is something that um, you can understand and, and read. And if you have any questions, you can always call us. Uh, we do actually pick the phone up uh, when you call. So let me move on here. I, I, I put a slide up here for phase two. Uh, you have about a 45 to 50% chance of getting funded for phase two. Uh, and that's principally because uh, you, know, you may have evaluated well, but you're you're competing with only those people that had awards in phase one for the most part. So you're at your opportunity for, for award it grows considerably under that. Um, just so I have a few, I don't want to run out of time here, uh, I wanted to uh, tell you that first time awardees would be that first line up there. I apologize, I haven't updated this slide, I need to do that. But it, it is running roughly the same, um, as, at the same level as FY14. Uh, so first time awardees, those are people that may have submitted multiple times uh, stand a better chance of getting funded uh, than those that are just first-time applicants. So um, that changes based on the number of times you might be submitting uh, an application to a topic that's relevant to what you may have submitted the year before. So everyone wants to know where our reviewers come from, what's their affiliation? Well you can see right there about 50 percent of them come from one of our 10 national labs. Uh, Another 30% or so come from our research universities uh, where these programs are putting out huge sums of dollars to fund research uh, in support of the department's mission. And so we reach out to them. Some of the programs do use uh, government personnel. The National Energy Technology Lab for Fossil Energy is one. Sometimes the Advanced Scientific Computing Research Program uh, uses uh, government reviewers. Uh, but for the most part, uh, they come from, you know, 80% or so come from uh, one of our national labs and the universities. Uh, all of our reviewers do uh, sign confidentially, confidentiality agreements. They all uh, sign conflict of interest uh, agreements. And if there is a conflict of interest, they don't review it. Uh, that would mean you probably have, uh, maybe you've done business with them in some capacity or, um, uh, uh, it could be for a number of reasons, but uh, they, if there is a conflict, they don't review and uh, they do not disclose. I never had an issue with either either one of those uh, as well, any problems. So uh, again, people want to know what are the, the five areas, what are the application areas, what are the issues that, uh, that, that screw up my chances of getting uh, either my application through the front door or getting it evaluated. And Carl Hebron will tell you that um, people that who fail to update their their required registrations, whether it's grants.gov or whether it's the system for award management, that's SAM. Um, and I will note that the required registrations, those are all federal requirements. The federal government wants to know where it's where the taxpayer money is going, so there's a lot of things that you would have to register for so they can track that if you are funded, who is applying to them. Uh, is it a U.S. small business? Uh, for it's, does 
it, a whole gamut of, of, of interests are looking at this to make sure that it is, uh, Congress is looking at this uh, as well. And uh, the administration looks at these uh, to, to ensure that, it, uh, that what's going out there is, is, is meeting the, the priorities, budget priorities of that, that current administration. So you need to update your registrations. Uh, you need to do it early. And again, if you go to that doesbirlearning.com website, when, a, when topics are listed, we will walk you through how to prepare that application. We'll tell you very specifically which tutorials would apply to you at that any one time during the schedule. And uh, we can help keep it uh, becoming an overwhelming process by taking you uh, one step at a time through that. So little things like failing to submit a, a phase one commercialization plan. Your phase one commercialization plan only asks for two little things in there. However, people fail to uh, submit that document. And if that is not documented, uh, attached, then you don't get through the front door. Um, if you don't, uh, if you improperly name your file names, little, little silly, what I call silly things, that the detail, the devil's in the detail type things, if you don't uh, read through the, the, the instructions carefully, you can get caught up. And nobody wants to get, uh, after spending 150 hours on an application, nobody wants to get turned away because they didn't. Uh, you know, grants.gov, which is not a DOE system, is and not within our control, is is rejecting your application, and it doesn't even get to us. Um, some of the other error, uh, errors that I mentioned earlier uh, is the level of effort. Um, we do provide a worksheet there for you. If you go to our website, you can find all this information as well. Um, and if you fail to properly mark your proprietary data, um, we tell you how you can highlight, underline, and put brackets around this information. Uh, you need to make sure that that is properly uh, marked. Um, and phase zero. This is this is a, a big program here at, in our. I won't say big program. This it's it's it's, it's a very popular program. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is we're reaching out to states like Nebraska, and we're reaching out to those states uh, are those people who are who are women who are women and uh, minority-owned small businesses, and we're trying to increase the number of applications and ultimately awards that we make to those underrepresented groups at DOE. And so we offer uh, a, a series of services that are free to you um, if you are accepted into the program. And uh, what we do, we will help you with that letter of intent. We won't uh, help you with the content. We'll help you uh, in, in much the same way we will with your proposal preparation. Uh, service is to make sure that you're conveying what you want to convey about what you are doing and that there's a connection between what you are doing and the topic or the subtopic that you are submitting to. So uh, we provide uh, some complimentary assistance that you might get from Nebraska uh, Business Development as well. We do some small business training and mentoring. Uh, if we don't have that and Nebraska offers that, then as a partner, uh, we, you know, Nebraska can recommend you to us and we will recommend um, you to them if you're not aware of, of, of them as, a, uh, as, as someone who offers services to small businesses in your state. Um, so there's four services that are kind of core to this program and it's the letter of intent, it's the phase one proposal preparation review and submission assistance. Those are kind of two services. Uh, we provide small business development training and mentoring and uh, some market research reports that we will do for you. Then we offer one other uh, uh, service um, that might be more specific to what your needs are that you can get of that. Again, it's no cost to you. And if you're a small business that has a responsive technology to one of our topics, it's a good chance that you're going to get into this program and, um, uh, and, and get the support that uh, we feel that you, you need to get your uh, a high quality application through the door properly uh, it, and, and a fair chance of getting reviewed. Um, that's ultimately what you want to do is be able to get reviewed and, and evaluated on the merits of what you're trying to achieve there. Uh, there the, web, the phase zero assistance web, the phase zero assistance program opens, it closes, but it opens uh, when the tech, when the topics are released and 
Uh, so July 17th, I think that was the date, and October 30th. Those are when the programs open up and they close the day that the applications are due. So they'll help you with soup to nuts from, from topics all the way to uh, proposal submission. And um, so the big thing, I before I forget, I, I would encourage you to anywhere on our website, you just Google DOESBIR, all, anywhere, any page on our website on the bottom left is the a box to put your um, email into and we'll notify you when topics are released. We'll send you a link to the topics. Uh, we'll tell you uh, topics webinar is next week and we'll send you a link to register for that free registration and uh, we send out maybe a dozen emails a year and you can choose what you want to receive or what you don't want to receive. Uh, but it's a great a site for everybody to be on if you're interested in the Department of Energy's SBIR program because we will we'll, we'll tell you won't have to remember any of this we'll tell you that you know what what you need to know when it's time uh, it's a it's a good communication tool for us um, and so there are the websites once again uh, the online learning system that's where tutorials are uh, it'll walk you through eligibility, if you want to determine whether or not it's this even appropriate for you, SBIR and STTR, uh, whether your small business is doing what you should be doing to, to be eligible. Um, and then we give you about 33 tutorials. But if you click on the schedule uh, at the top there of, of the web page, you'll find a uh, when the topics are released from a sequential way in which you can uh, prepare and submit your application along with the tutorials that are very um, easy to watch. Um, additional resources can be found on that long website. That's our website. That's a government website. And so if you just, again, Google DOESBIR, you'll find this website and you'll find the additional resources that you can use. Uh, and then again, uh, you know, there's the website there. Uh, there's the short link to our mailing list. You can email any operational questions you want to uh, that email address. We have a team of people who uh, will pick up the phone uh, from 8.30 to 5 uh, p.m. Eastern time, and uh, that 35707 number is their office. You can call that. They, they do pick up the phone, and uh, we'll answer your questions if it's related to the operational aspects of uh, of what you need. If it's a topic related question and the topics are open, you can contact the topic manager and speak to them. That's one other distinction between a grant and a contract. We don't have uh, the restrictions that uh, that contracts have with communication. So that is when you pick up the, the phone or, or you send out an email to these uh, topic managers, uh, that discussion is between you two. And uh, uh, whereas with a contract if you ask a question you can't ask anything that's specific to your your technology if you don't want it to be posted up on on fed or fed connect and uh, where they have where all communication with a uh, manager under a, utilizing contracts for SBIR has to post those questions for the public to see what's being asked because it's a competitive um, uh, contracting um, mechanism that they're using that and that's what the requirements call for. Um, so that's it. That's my 40, uh, 45 minutes. And if we have uh, <laughs> time for questions, uh, Wei, I'll be happy to yeah. take those. Yeah, thanks, Chris, for giving us this uh, great webinar. And we have a couple questions here. So Chris, can you go to the slide 11? I, I will try. <laughs> but, um, give me a second. I may have just clicked on a link. Because my looks like my okay. Let's see what I can do. It looks like it might be opening something up, but um, yeah, the, I can go to it or I can start speaking to it and then. Okay, what, what's, the, what's the question? The slide eleven release hmm. one and two dates. Should those two thousand sixteen dates to be two thousand seventeen? Oops, did I yeah. do something wrong here? Yeah, the dates is like two thousand sixteen. So. Should it be oh, it is 2000. Days to uh, be it should be. Yes. I, I updated that chart a couple days ago just before I, I sent that to you. Yeah, so I screwed up. Yeah, that, you're very good. Very good eyes. That's, I get screwed up all the time with this. Uh, but I do know July 17th is correct and October 30th, and it should be 2017. I didn't okay. quite get the date. So all the number 
from uh, of the year the 2016 should be 2017. So this year, year we still have the you know phase one release open in July 17. Exactly, that's exactly right. All 2016 dates there should be. Uh, I thought I updated that. I'm surprised. I, I'm usually not that bad. <laughs> but yes, it's 2017. That's good. Good eye. Thank you for whoever caught that. Okay, everyone, um, do you have any question? Just uh, type your question on the uh, question box so Chris uh, will answer it. And uh, one more thing I want to let you guys know, I will send you the link for this webinar slides and uh, the uh, webinar recording video. So don't worry about that if you miss anything from the webinar, so don't worry about that. I will send you the slides and the uh, video uh, later. <laughs> Okay. So the, we will share the whole slides. And one yeah. more thing I want to talk about is like the lev, uh, level of, of effort worksheet. worksheet. Mm -hmm. So I have the link post to the chat box. So everyone, please uh, click that link. It's very useful for your uh, prepared the, uh, proposal for the SBR. It's a link. I post a link. It's a level of the effort worksheet. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Chris, to give us this uh, great information. It's really okay. helpful. Okay. Well, it was my pleasure, and thanks, Wei. So I, we will share the slides later and the recording later, so don't worry about that part. So do you have any questions? I would encourage everybody, to, again, to reach out to those phone numbers. Um, my phone number is, if you want to give me a call and chat, is 301-903-5713. Uh, and, you know, it, we will pick up the phone. If you call Carl Hebron right now, his, his phone number is 301-903-1414. He lives to pick that phone up and answer your question. So even if we're all standing there talking to him, the phone rings, he picks it up and talks and leaves the whole office standing there waiting until he answers your question. So we do pick up the phone. We're, we're really good at that. So again, I'd encourage uh, you to give us a call. Yeah, Chris, one more question. And uh, they ask, you stated uh, you work with um, underserved states, women owned. So an interest in the SDV, OSB, or HubDom, small business. Mm -hmm. uh, did I, um, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you there, Wei. Um, yeah, they said you, uh, we, pre, um, you know, like DOE prefer work with, you know, underserved state uh, small business or women own small business. Right. So do you, any, do you have any interest in um, HubDom uh, small business, work with HubDom? No, 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 HubZone, no, we don't. Um, the federal government wants to always know. That's one of the registrations that, that uh, when you're filling out an application, it'll, you'll have to designate whether you're in a HubZone or not. But um, that is not, uh, the reason we're looking at these underrepresented uh, groups is because it's part of our legislation. We're legislatively mandated to uh, reach out to those underrepresented states and women-owned and, and minority-owned small businesses. Uh, so we don't have anything there about veterans. We don't have anything in there about um, HubZone. And, and we're not, um, again, we're not looking for, uh, we're only looking to provide support uh, for, for application assistance. We don't give any preferential treatment uh, beyond that. So, OK. So do you have any question? Uh, one more question coming. Uh, okay. Phase zero, the partner travel, please explain more. <laughs> yeah, phase zero that, that's, and partner it, travel. Sure, sure. Um, we call, yeah, we refer to it as partner travel. It is, it is travel. Um, what, what the idea of this, uh, we didn't offer this when we first started the program and at the end of 2014, um, but what it's all about is, is what it says right there. We, we want to promote collaboration between you and one of our national labs. 
or, 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 or what we've now broadened it out to is to a, a, maybe a research institution. If, you want to, if you're in the phase zero program and that is the uh, option that you select, you'll get up to two days. Uh, to, you'll, we'll reimburse you up to $1,000 to travel to, um, you know, to meet with your partner, to secure a partner, and um, that's really what it's all about. We don't. It's, it's, it's. So what you need to also keep in mind is, is these services open up the day the topics are released, and then they close uh, just before the. Um, you know, they close the day of the application submission date. It doesn't give you a lot of time to put together uh, a proposal. Not as much time as you think. So the travel is not a, uh, a highly used. Uh, uh, issue because it does take you away from from writing your proposal and getting on a plane and going somewhere for a day or two. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, let me so, let me just point uh, out um, because the the indirect rate and financial information is a, a highly popular service that uh, we have a an accounting firm that provides support to help you determine all of your. Uh, financial information that you'll need to report in an application. It's not easy uh, stuff to keep uh, to 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 put together for a small business. We also offer a webinar uh, on indirect rate and financial information. Uh, we give examples and we we have spreadsheets and all that good stuff. So there's a lot of good stuff on our our website that we offer. So um, keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, so everyone, do you have any more questions? It's almost, you know, two o'clock. So, uh, okay. So far, I didn't see any questions coming. So, thanks again, Chris, and it's great webinar. Sure thing, and thanks for having me. Way, we'll, we'll talk yeah, again. Yeah, thanks again. Mm -hmm. Bye. Right. Bye, everyone. Bye now.